about uh, Mike's firm. And the thing that was very interesting is that it mentioned that there is this uh, practice in Hertfordshire and they are doing the design for uh, Ducati motorbikes. It was very hard to kind of imagine what Ducati were doing going to uh, Hertfordshire to get their design. One had always heard that the Italians were very well known for their own uh, design. And I think it, it was a really exciting thing to try and find out uh, what is it that a AKA Design do. And I think since then we have been uh, pursuing them to um, try and uh, get an exhibition which uh, is going to be officially open uh, tomorrow of uh, some of their work. But the way that they also work both with uh, uh, various kinds of uh, computer software um, uh, such as Alias and, and others and also the question of prototyping. I think many of you were here last week when we had Mark Newson. I know that you know that the, 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 the school is trying to build bridges with other disciplines uh, such as industrial design or fashion design when in a couple of weeks time we'll have Hossein Chalayan come and talk about his work. It's very interesting to see what are the parallels um, uh, between architecture and other disciplines and uh, I'm certainly looking forward to uh, hearing Mike talk about uh, uh, their practice and the way that they do it uh, compared to architects. Please welcome Mike Phillips. Hi. Thanks for coming. Good evening. Can you hear me okay at the back? Yeah. Okay. At AKA, we have a theory that nice is bad. Bland is not noticed, is forgotten, and just won't do. We form relationships with products, as with environments, as with people. The relationship begins the first time you see the product, whether it be an iMac, a phone, a car, or a motorcycle, or a house. Once you have the product at home, it is the product's character with which you form the relationship. A train in a station, or a plane at the airport should make you say, I'd love to have a go on that. We prefer to design products with character. Love it or hate it, but don't ignore it. This evening we will look at the following things. First of all, a short overview of AKA, what we do and how we do it. Then the story of two great Italian names in motorcycle manufacture and why they came to Hertfordshire for design. And finally, a look at some future mass transit concepts. Much of what we do will, I hope, strike a chord with the architects among you, with the use of space, exploration of new forms, and how to make them happen. We're a team of about a dozen young, young designers with backgrounds in product design, engineering, and automotive design. Our studio is in the deepest Hertfordshire, uh, within converted stables, as part of a model farm which was originally designed by Lutchens who most of you should know, I imagine. Anybody who doesn't can come see me afterwards. The environment is conducive to creativity and surrounded by beautiful countryside in a largely unspoiled village. Within one of the listed barns, we have installed one of the largest five-axis CNC mills in Europe. The Autobahn is AKA's most recent technological development. This, this full-size form development facility enables high-speed production of one-to-one -one physical models up to nine by six meters by two and a half meters of the design in hand. High-speed machining of the form ensures completion within hours. Designers are able to watch the model emerge and the design can be enhanced at any stage by hand with the changes captured digitally. The autobahn provides an integrated unit in which this activity can take place. Incidentally, then, the autobahn is our German customers, BMW and VW. They found it amusing anyway. <laughs> what we do here is to create uh, what we do in, at AKA is to create feasible designs and to help them to bring them to reality. We design cars and trucks and trains, motorcycles, planes and boats, as well as consumer products. A large number of what we do is product architecture. Some of the processes may be similar to those used by you, and certainly the 3D CAD design element should converge soon with that used in architecture. The example shown here is a small lightweight sports car recently designed by, the British, uh, by us for the British manufacturer Strathcarran. We achieved rapid form development um, with the five axis CNC machine, uh, machining of various materials including foam and clay. We can machine an entire foam in about a weekend. It will run itself if we trust, trust it to. 
Um, as I say, this process uh, enables us to work with people, some of the biggest companies in the world, BMW, Ford, Honda, Nissan, of the car world, and Glaxo welcome in the very small world. Um, the car is, sorry, next slide. The car is tested in BBC's Top Gear um, a few weeks ago. This is being driven by Tiff Liddell. I don't know if that's him there, but he tested it. Um, he enjoyed the spirited performance given by the 1200cc motorcycle engine. AKA combined um, with Honda to form a team to design the interior of the, uh, the product architecture and the interior for the Honda Newcom concept car, which was shown in Tokyo this last year. Uh, this was modelled and visualised against technical specification and H-point data provided by Honda. The interior is um, all about communication, uh, but the seats are an important element of the car. Uh, I believe they're an elegant solution. They're a minimal structure, deriving their strength, spring and comfort directly from the nature of the formed material and the manufacturing processes alone. There's no upholstery needed. Uh, when a train like this pulls into Euston, it will stand out. Hopefully not because it's the only train that's pulled into use in that evening. <coughs> the response should be, wow, you know, what is that? I would really like to go on it. Um, the striking form is achieved with, a strong, with strong lines evocative of a 30s Mallard locomotive. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, steel runs through the design rather than plas the plastic amorphous look frequently found in stations these days. Uh, we design planes. This is a 146 interior, not designed by us, but visualised by us. Uh, hardly appealing or comfortable, I think you'd agree. How should future large planes actually be? Exterior form of very large planes is likely to be a flying wing configuration or lifting body. Uh, it, should and could be, it should and could be exciting, inspiring, with the form representing what is actually happening. And what are you doing? Remember, you're ac actually flying. You know, it's quite, quite a thing to be doing, and the form should excite you. Um, interior is even more important, and perhaps where our work becomes closest to interior architecture. And we'll look at these concepts more closely later. Uh, we also, as I say, work on boats. This is a six-meter racing yacht for Ronda. Um, a range of consumer products, including mobile phones, products for Flymo and Black & Decker. Um, this is a, an automatic robot mower. And uh, what is that? What should a robot mower look like? We created these concepts to develop a new visual language for a new, gen new generation of products. Uh, traditionally, lawnmowers are a male purchase uh, bought by men. Mowing still seems to be a male activity. We used our cross-fertilization of transport and product influences and said, well, why not make it like a Group C sports car? It's a bit of fun, but it's also inspiring for the flymo management. Um, it could look like some sort of animal or grazing animal, I think. It's all based on existing components. And motorcycles. We designed concepts. Don't worry, this is just a toy concept for action man. Uh, and this is the Benelli Tornado. More of this soon. What we actually do in business terms, which is, I'm afraid the, to say, the dirty reality of what we do, uh, is develop appealing products faster allowing our customers to get to market sooner than their competition. This allows them to increase their profits by being first to market, if they want to be, and then being able to sell their products for longer before replacing them with um, the obvious consequent greatly increased return on their R&D investment. We also pride ourselves on helping to improve the workflow between clients and designer during a project by using, um, excuse me, by using our designed communication and management processes. Our methods allow for faster management decision making by showing really meaningful visions early on in the process. They're not unmakeable sketches, but makeable sketches. But most importantly, we think that our approach allows greater design creativity right through to production. And what I mean by that is that by comparison to more traditional methods, we are able to increase the proportion of time given to the creative design process in relation to the overall development time in two ways. Firstly, by employing the best digital designers within the team to take full responsibility for the development of a design right from concept through to tooling data, which they can do working within a fully digital studio. And by utilizing a large, full-scale, um, rapid prototyping technique, which is all fully integrated within the studio and the creative process. Well, what you really came 
here to see isn't all that stuff, is it? For those of you at the back, or for those of you with short sight, this is really what you came to see, according to the PR that was released about this talk. Sex sells things, and we shouldn't be coy about it. There are real and valid reasons why. We, of course, are animals that have evolved over millions of years to appreciate and be stimulated by various elements in our environment. These include the sensuous form, male or female. The innate subconscious visual and tactile response is far more sophisticated, subtle and powerful than we're usually prepared to admit or accept. Modern civilization, however, its conscious development of culture, what is acceptable, beautiful and what is not, is a set of rules entirely constructed by man, entirely artificial. That is only of the order of a few thousands of years old. Our senses and minds have been hundreds of years in the making. Hundreds, hundreds of millions of years in the making. Passion and design and life is vital. Efficiency on its own is good, but very dull. The Ducati 900 MHE was conceived to mark 20 years since Mike Halewood's famous TT win. The brief was to produce a striking motorcycle reflecting Ducati's core brand qualities. The bike commemorates the racing feats of one of the greatest racers of all time, Mike Halewood. The incredible racing career of Mike Hellwood has been documented in countless books and films. During the late 50s and 60s, he dominated Grand Prix racing with a string of victories until his retirement in 1967. In 1978, bored with his nine-to-five lifestyle, Hellwood returned to the track after an 11-year self-imposed retirement. He chose the 37.7-mile Isle of Man TT course for his return venue on a Ducati 900. Against the odds, he rode to victory, stunning competition and dramatically demonstrating that when great men and great machines combine, the results can rewrite the record books. The director of the Ducati Design Center, Pierre Teblanche, came to us with a brief to produce a striking motorcycle which would reflect Ducati's core brand qualities. And by calling upon some of the greatest um, bikes in Ducati's past, celebrate again Mike Halewood's famous victory. The concepts consist of a combination of influences, steam power, retro, rocket ship, Dan Dare, you name it. It's all sketched in studio paint, which is a part of the playlist we work with. Some further sketches. If the new bike was to have an exposed engine, then the clutter that's often hidden under a fairing, like the oil cooler, bolted on external components and hoses, would have to be integral to the engine. Starting with a pretty untidy 900 SS chassis, shown here, the design team built up the new approach, having scanned in the chassis into Alias and are sketching directly over the chassis in 2D. The design team built up the new approach, as I say. The new engine casings and superstructure were incorporated into the first digital sketching. It looks like it's doing 100 miles an hour while stationary, the lines and the posture of the bike are beginning to form a purposeful direction. Next, as the design evolves, the volumes are reduced to the minimum possible to allow the frame to breathe, to give the fresh air look that was sought after. An expressive single-sided trellis swing arm was engineered. True 3D modeling and alias ensures that the concepts are feasible. It's then put back into alias and the surfaces and highlights are checked for their true form again in, in alias. And a styrene model is cut over a real chassis, an engine. At this point, great trust is put in the machine and its programmers, as any error can prove very costly. This approach allows the designers to check out the real form in 3D for the first time, soon after the concept has been proposed. And the correct ergonomics are established to allow the riders to move around the bike easily. Having refined the foam model, a clay can be built, which is the model shown uh, in the exhibition here. Um, the shapes are developed further, both manually and digitally, with the final forms digitized back into alias for surfacing. These are complicated structures requiring large amounts of computer power and speed. From this clay model, GRP molds are taken and parts produced for the show bike. Instruments and headstock are all machined in-house by AKA. Um, instead of rear-view rear view mirrors, the prototype featured a working live video display in the cockpit just to the left of the speedometer. Uh, which is linked to a camera in the tail. The engine casings were given a clean, high-quality feel, reflecting the Ducati brand values. 
it again. Uh, the wasp waisted styling is intended to provoke and fascinate. There's a compact fairing with a chrome bezel headlamp, a long fuel tank, a cut off tail which eliminates wake, and bright work machine gun style exhausts which are integrated into the, the design. The exhaust gases are directed out at the side of the pipes, allowing the indicators to be positioned within them. Although, although this was a design which was intended to be provocative for the show bike, it was actually dropped in production, even though it would work. It all adds up to a classic 70s racer, and yet the entire approach is forward-looking in its exploration of new masses and lines, new ways of occupying space. A quote from Superbike magazine, uh, December 98, Ducati's MHE 900E was the most amazing new bike at the recent Munich show, no question. The Evoluzione, with its wacky blend of high-tech engineering, retro styling and intricate detailing, had been produced in great secrecy and was by far the most innovative machine on display. On New Year's Day 2000, Ducati became the first manufacturer ever to launch a new motorcycle exclusively on the World Wide Web, and in doing so rang up the biggest internet sales in Italian history. Orders for the new bike became available online at 1 minute past 12 GMT on the 1st of January this year. Within 31 minutes, the entire first year's production was sold out. And within the next few weeks, the rest of the limited edition produ production of 2,000 units was snapped up. These are motorcycles which cost 15,000 pounds each. Ducati became the largest e-tailer in Italy overnight. Um, thousands of emails were sent in, there's 10,000 odd uh, received. I'd like to read you two that were published in a book about this design uh, recently. The top one says, I'm writing to find out what I need to get my hands on an MHE. While I realize the deadline for ordering this has passed, I'm in a position to buy whatever, to pay whatever it takes for to have one of these bikes. Hell, I'm in a position to buy the whole company if need be. Let's make a deal. And the bottom one, as you can see, says, I'm embarrassed to write this, but I need to know the correct process by which I can withdraw an order. My husband has lost his head for your goddamn bike. We're on a tight budget, and in no way can we afford to be ordering major purchases while playing around on the net. <laughs> That's it, yeah, I should never have got in that computer, yeah, and so on. So, this is the team of convicts that, uh, at AKA responsible for producing the design from concept to show bike in just 12 weeks. The actual, sh the show bike shown there was put up for sale at Sotheby's at an auction in New York with a reserve price of a half a million dollars, considerably more than we were paid for the entire project. <laughs> at the end of uh, this project, however, Ducati said, uh, the MHE is the most advanced motorcycle in the history of Ducati, not just in the way it was sold, but in the way that it was built too. The very sophisticated te CAD technology allowed us to develop a model on computer and then, th then to sculpt a prototype directly through a link to a milling machine. Uh, Teblanche said it gives us more time to realize our aspirations, to rework, to retouch, to get close to perfection. <coughs> the MHE has much in common with all our other bikes. It's a true Ducati. It's light, agile, essential. If you want to give this bike a definition, I suppose you could call it neoclassical. It blends traditional elements of the Ducati brand with the new and the avant-garde. The only way to truly appreciate this machine, however, is to own it and to live it. But bad luck, we haven't already got one. Um, okay, Benelli Tornado is the next Italian company to come to us. Benelli came to us last year to become part of their team in the development of a new superbike. The owner of uh, Benelli runs a superbike racing team and wanted to develop a world beating bike destined for production as well as racing. The Tornado has a number of innovative engineering advances, for most of which was, is a trip, new triple cylinder engine placed as far forward in the frame as possible. This gives the bike superior handling characteristics. It also allows a narrow, narrow frontal aspect, reducing aerodynamic resistance. Starting with a sketch demonstrating the character Benelli wanted, Adrian Morton, the senior designer from Benelli, came to AKA to realize the dream. We developed the concept into a workable design in Alias, creating strong clean lines and increasing the dynamism of form, but making it makeable. We used Katia solid modeling, the engineering software uh, as industry standard in the automotive business. Uh, we built CAD models of the frame, developing the chassis elements as we went. The clay model was produced by CNC milling and manual refinement in the autobahn. 
If you look to the rear of the bike, there is a bridge which connects the rear wheel to the chassis. That's called swing arm. And what we were given there is a prototype and a fairly ugly piece of metal it is. We felt it should be, um, every component should be beautifully engineered, no matter how functional it is. This component sculpturally reflects the lines of force and works as an object in its own right. So we had it made and cast to prove that it could be done. <clears throat> the bike is designed to allow the riders to move around with ease and sculptural quality is paramount. When viewed from above, the shape of the new tornado is unorthodox. Without a radiator, the front is very tapered. At the tank and engine, the bike widens, narrowing at the saddle to gather the rider's legs, resulting in optimum streamline, streamlining. The visual package promises lightweight, sharp handling, power and speed, all reflections of the uh, performance of the bike. The concept to prototype show bike shown here was done in just 16 weeks. Part of the brief was to relaunch the Benelli brand with as much impact as possible and to make as many magazine covers as possible. <coughs> 47, 47 magazine covers have been made to date around the world. And if you can see the words on the front of the motorcycle news, and remember that they're just talking about a motorcycle, love at first sight, it says. Touch it, hear it, smell it, want it. A word of journalists seeing the racing prototypes for the first time in the summer at the Isle of Man TT. This, however, does sum up one of the aims of good product design, which is to attract and make you glad every day that you've spent £10,000 on a motorcycle. If you want to hear the bike for yourselves, you can log on to www.tornadovinelli.com. There's a rather unique engine sound from the triple cylinder engine, um, and you can hear it on the web. Now on to a little bit about uh, what might be happening in the future world of mass transit. Um, there's an increasing need for large, fast craft capable of carrying large numbers of people on water and in the air. Aircraft and fast ferries are all getting bigger. Jet foil concepts that we produce here for Southeast Asian fast ferry builders um, are purely pointers, but we're saying that a 60 meter craft for 650 people that's capable of 60 to 70 knots should look exciting. It should offer a preview for the efficient, technologically advanced experience to come. And it could be fun. Why not? Using Alias, we can generate 3D views to understand the use of space based on a plan, the passenger flow and class requirements. This scheme allows for a 650 seat multiple class configuration and can apply equally to a large delta wing aircraft. In fact, this scheme does work for a large delta wing aircraft. This type of craft must be designed for the real benefit of passengers, not simply more space, meaning more seats and more revenue. Boarding would be through the rear of this craft with entertainment, eating and drinking on the upper deck. The departure lounge and airport layout should be integrated with the rest of the travel experience and integrated with the uh, arrivals desk on the aircraft as shown here or, or in the fast ferry. So it should make a seamless travel experience. Um, it should be seamless and or have a carefully staged transition, not the disjointed and unpleasant experience that ports and airport or airports so often are. How about making the departure lounge a module which becomes the cabin to be cleaned and restocked on turnaround before joining up with the plane? Here you see a large and welcoming um, reception area, which in flight turns into a bank or bureau de change, and in the evening might then turn into a bar. Efficient use of space requires multiple use areas, changing use through the journey by altering lighting conditions and minimal physical change. So Alias allows us to do that. A transition corridors between the cabins would have dual use to save space. Firstly, uh, it's transition and relax. You have cabin to cabin access and a social area where you can take a coffee and stretch your legs, which is becoming increasingly important for health reasons. Um, we also call this a mind room, where we can address the emotional aspects of travel, providing travel information, magazines, destination information, opportunities at arrival maybe, uh, through internet access. There would also be a shopping and showcase area where you could see the product on screen, shop, 
pay, print an order from the internet, and collect your shopping on arrival at the port of destination. At the front of the main deck is the first class seating area. Mini cabins are provided in pairs which may be subdivided. This is more about the marking out of personal territory. Luggage is stowed within the area, keeping it under the passenger's own control. Alias, again, lets us visualise these makeable sketches in different lighting conditions. On the upper deck, we cater for softer human needs. The design of such a craft should be as much about emotion as function. And here, I think, particularly design is architecture, and architecture is design. Areas should respond to the various emotions experienced on an 18-hour journey. Increasing claims for um, deep vein thrombosis underline the necessity to deliver greater comfort and space to each passenger. Facilities on aircraft should be located such that walking is encouraged. Advances in clear air turbulence forecasting will make this possible in the near future without throwing people around. The following images are all about atmosphere. The role of the designer is to set the vision, describe the big picture including the intangibles and the atmospherics at the concept end of the, of the project. This is the front bar, and it's based on the plan shown before. It has a fine atmosphere. Um, fabric sails are used to break up the space. Uh, tables are provided with standing or leaning room for a drink. And perhaps in aircraft, there'll be nodes dotted around the cabin with oxygen-enriched, humidified air fountains. Sonic showers with music and poetry projected to a particular points, just as in Oslo Airport today. This is the bar in the evening. Again, Alias lets us go and change the lighting conditions very easily. Uh, the different lighting changes the atmosphere, the lighting on the sails, and the large ceiling windows give a good view of the night sky sailing by. Full use of the upper deck cabin form should be made to provide distinct areas of spaciousness and privacy. The height of the ceiling combined with the form and the color of the ceiling panels together with selective lighting can combine to create areas which inspire calm. And again, at night. What should a large Delta Wing aircraft look like? <coughs> Very beautiful creature. As we said earlier, it should be exciting. It should be forward-looking. Or dramatic but never boring. This brings us to the end of our lecture. Thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, we could do. I was saying I'll, I'll take one or two questions, but I'll be around afterwards if anybody would rather just have a chat, because I think that's... Uh, I'll take two questions now if anybody has any. Uh, yes, um, we, we use alias uh, principally for sketching right through, so providing surface data for tooling. Um, and we work with CATIA, which is the, uh, as I say, automotive industry standard software for solid modeling. So the two combine very, very, together very well. We can exchange data between the two very well. So. Hello, uh, man in the orange at the back. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be very pleased to, to go through the process with you. Um, it is quite long-winded, um, so perhaps let's have a chat afterwards. But basically, um, <clears throat> by doing everything on Alias and Katia from start to finish, except for the very first back-of-envelope sketches, uh, it speeds everything up. But that's the essence of it. But let, let me talk to you afterwards, if I may, and fill in more detail. Yeah.
in the process. They might not be upstairs. Sure, I was, yeah, okay. Right, so what, uh, what we, we start off with a brief where we have to pick out all the different requirements, including marketing, uh, engineering requirements, manufacturing uh, considerations. And from that we distill uh, the, the, the structure which is going to um, design the product. Um, we sketch, like anybody else, in sketch pads, but then we sketch quickly into studio, uh, alias studio paint. Um, we will define a volume uh, package for if whatever, whatever it is we're dealing with, whether it's a telephone or a train, we'll have a volume package which we'll scan in or build in alias, and then we'll sketch over that in 2D uh, studio paint. That's the quickest way to get a variety of designs and a number of different themes which can then be presented as a review. Once they're presented, we select a direction and that goes forward into the next stage of the process and that direction is developed and firmed up. Uh, there may be any number of reviews during that stage where we refine and push, push the design forwards. We prefer to work at that point as a very, um, well at every point, very, as, as a very close part of a team with the client. We're not, uh, we don't go off and work in isolation, very rarely. So communication um, throughout a project is absolutely vital. As we go on from there, we start to build uh, accurate solid models and surface models in Katia and Alias. Um, we'll then machine uh, prototypes very quickly, as I said, um, and feed that back into Alias, ag again, producing the production data. All along the way, we'll call on various experts. We're only a small team and we can't do it all ourselves. We're working with software engineers on various telematics projects for car interiors at the moment. Um, so electronic boffins from Cambridge come down and help us and baffle us with uh, three-letter acronyms. And <laughs> so we, we don't do it in isolation, and we, but we are very much part of the client's team. We help them do it. Um, so I hope that covers that process a little more. At what point does the material become an issue? Well, right from the outset, all our designers are um, qualified product or transport designers. They, have, they understand the limitations of the material they're going to use. And so the concepts will be drawn with material usage in mind. Um, sometimes you want to do something that the material won't allow you to do, so you go off and design it in unobtainium or some special material like that. But, um, and sometimes the technology can be found to catch, you, catch up with you. Uh, but more normally, it's just good common sense application of, of thought um, as to what a piece of steel might do or a piece of plastic might do. Um, we don't use uh, the computing power to say what it will let us do and what it won't let us do. We pull the other way, it's a human effort rather than a, a CAD effort. feeds off another and we insist on the variety of work that we have. We would rather turn down another car and do something different. For instance, we're doing a, a nice little boat at the moment. Um, and we find that that keeps us fresh and one area informs another. What we learn on train design, we can apply to aircraft design. What we learn in medical product design, we can apply to the interior of a car. Um, and it is basically all the same process. If you're a 3D designer, an architect, then you can apply those processes in any area. It's a question of scale. Yeah? Do you think you might um, then start to design buildings? Um, no. 
We're not Philip Stark, who has had a crack at all of those things. Um, yeah, I think we, what we'd like to do is work with architects to develop systems. They may be called buildings. It'd be good to do that. I've worked with um, an architectural practice on the design of an interior aircraft, and we brought them in to bring a fresh perspective, and that was a very interesting process. It didn't differ wildly from what we do at the concept stage, so it was a good mix of uh, skills. One more. <laughs> no? Okay. You let me off. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. Well, we